Sub shitters, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to an SP Patrons video today that I'm making for Huang Zhudong for their custom monthly music review. We're going to be checking out a track by an act named Sound Fragments. And if I have that uh, translation correctly done, it's from DeepL. Just, you know, just, just as a heads up, this is me translating it from DeepL. Um, titled Morning in a Strange City. And if we switch over to here, it's the third track off of this album, which is apparently called Spreading the Light to the Open Land. So again, hopefully the translations aren't too far off there. Again, uh, Deep Hell coming to the rescue. Um, we're going to listen through these. It should be noted just actually before we continue that Huang Zhudong was kind enough to provide translations uh, for the lyrics in this video. So we'll be checking them out after this. So thank you for that. And um, we're going to listen through this track from start to finish. I'm going to hear what you think. Let's go. So charming with the FX change on the guitars as well, and panning on the right is kind of very pretty, isn't it? Oh, snap is kind of funky, isn't it? Great chord note accenting with those kicks. Okay. I know this chord progression. So that's, here's a fun fact. Instantly, this is actually a similar chord, uh, chord progression to, you know that new song by Ed Sheeran named Shivers? This is the same chord progression that's used in that song. Obviously this came out way, way before Shivers, but um, yeah, so I guess. <laughs> um, shout out to these guys for getting there first. But yeah, it's interesting when you hear these chord progressions between different songs. I prefer this one immediately. Um, might be a spicy take, but I'm just not too set on Ed Sheeran's more recent stuff. I love how those guitars on the left side just kind of trailed off there and we're just left with the bass and the drums. Such fantastic work with the sticks. Nice rounded sort of whole tone with the bass, you know. There's been no scooping or anything like that. Sounds nice and resonant, which is again, a difficult thing to get with bass tones, both in recordings and the production side. Oh, there's octave shifts there, that's kind of dope. Oh, and those are... Uh, beautiful arpeggios or lines we have on either side, double tracked is just splendid with those guitars. I love the roughness of that guitar tone there at the end of it, you know, like it's starting the intro of this new section here. A little bit of distortion, a little bit of overdrive on it, but just not enough to really commit to a heavier tonality. And because it, it's not sort of in the same position of the frequency spectrum as um, the vocals, you know, they sound like they're surrounding it. You know, the vocals are nice and resonant within the mix, uh, fairly well glued together. The, the lead tones in their part sound, they're a little bit louder than the vocals relative to each other in the mix, but I guess if they're doing a call and response thing, it's absolutely fine. Fantastic use of the head voice there. Oh, a little bit of bluesy. Uh, that there, that's, that's a kind of sexy little melody we had there. Oh, charming. Great synth work there. At least I think that was a sin. That is definitely a sin, yeah. I kind of feel bad for interrupting the lead repair, you know? 
It's such a sl it's just slapping at this point in time. Uh, with a five minute 30 track like this, you've got to be careful with how you stage it and phrase it. We had the vocals come in a little bit later than I would usually expect, but I kind of, I, I think that the themes with the bass, guitar, and drums were strong enough to keep that interest here. Um, we're at the halfway point now, though. We've had a verse and we've had a chorus, so it'll be great to see what we have here. And if we do have a solo section, it'll be beautifully unexpected. Now we're just repeating that lead line, and that's okay. Those bends. Oh, the, the panning here, the automation there is stunning. Such a gentle tone as well of those vocals. Mm. A little more percussive with those pseudo ladish rhythms out to the sides. Great, great choice there. I love how we're teasing the listener with those higher frequencies, that higher frequency stuff. It's really fresh sounding. It's really compelling. I just feel like I'm floating through this track. I'm being guided there gently. And I'm a massive fan of that approach from both the singer and the rest of the accompaniment. The band is really proficient with the way they're playing. There's a great sense of chemistry. There's less of the egocentrism that can come from like a lead guitarist or a vocalist or something like that. It seems like they're all trying to create this sort of atmosphere, this environment for the listener to bathe in and they're doing a spectacular job of it. Great change of textures at this point. I'm very thankful for this because while I am enjoying the musicality, the chord progressions, the bass line and the percussion, it's been four minutes now. So I just feel like for a lot of the listeners, they'd be needing something new. And these shakers, the tambourines, dude. Oh, we've just got a drum solo-ish kind of thing going on here. Oh, okay. A little bit misty with those guitars on the right. And the kind of bass warbles in and out. Great sense of emptiness here. Expanse. Oh, that was a gorgeous, gorgeous tone there with these leads cascading upwards. Very impressive. I can't believe it's been five minutes. <laughs> yeah, man. Fantastic. Really good. Lots of love for that. Lots of love for that. Really great song. Really great song. We'll talk about more why that is in the conclusion, but first we've got to have a look through the lyrics. Again, thank you to Huang Zhidong for providing these these lyrics. It helps me a lot as I probably wouldn't be able to understand them otherwise. So I like the imagery with like roads and exits and streets and stuff like that. It kind of helps you to envision that people are walking around trying to find their way on their journeys. It is a little bit confusing though. And I, I, I think that um it's just the depth of what's being discussed. Like, only cities approach immortality. So are they saying that only people who can stay constant and not move around are the ones that will stay for the long term? If you're too sort of like finicky with it, you won't get to appreciate the, the fruits of your labor. The rest of us cannot be simple. We have nothing but courage. We have no regrets except the loss. So, okay. So we're too, we, we, we keep going because we're scared of losing it. 
we can only be brave because of that. How can people and peers be lonely? So is this kind of further elaborate on people going in their own different journeys, right? Own different journeys. And then what occurs is that you have people who maybe find the same street, but then they still don't really know if they're gonna end up in the same location. And they're still walking regardless of whether they'll be happy or not if they stay. Only the morning light is easy without doubt, fresh as before. So yeah, okay, all right, this is a little bit unusual because this is the conclusion of this SP Patrons um, review uh, for Huang Zhudong um, of a track named Morning in a Strange City, if I'm not mistaken. Again, um, deep L translations there, but my, yeah, my understanding of this track, as I mentioned the lyric, is that it's about people finding their way through the world, deciding where they want to be with other people, wondering if they should continue walking, the only certainty knowing that they need to be brave because losing what they have is the worst thing. Every new morning is a new morning is the only certainty, I suppose. You know, that the sun will get up. It's interesting. I would like to um I'd like to have a chat to some of these musicians that I review, just to, to see how close I am to getting the story that it's about, because it is spectacular imagery and at face value, it's like I feel like I'm missing some key components, even though the words are literally right in front of me. You know what I mean? Do you ever get the feeling that you read something and there's just more to it, but then you also are afraid that you're gonna overanalyze and sort of kind of make it more than it needs to be? Do you know what I mean? I feel like this is one of those songs where maybe I'm overthinking it a little bit. It could just be literal, it could just be an, an idea or a concept that they're exploring. Um, but, but either way, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I really enjoyed my time with this track. Um, the singing, it does speak of someone who's been traveling that road a while, you know, there's a kindness and a passion and a vigor there, but there's also an experience and a wisdom in the vocal performance there, emotionally fits the scene of it incredibly well, you know, great vocal technique there, very the softness and a smoothness to it, there's no kind of raunchy, hard kind of stuff going on here, we just have singers on the mic that uh, know, know their own body, they know what sounds they can produce, they know how to emote correctly to the words and the story that they're telling, and overall it's very impressive. Um, I liked the little bits of extension of the vocal how melodies, and I, I think there were some harmonies at some point, I, I could be wrong, I'm pretty sure, because a lot of it was just the one person kind of talking to you, you know, in the verses, and I kind of dig that as well, because it's like someone that's passing you by as you walk down those streets. The main motif that accompanied it, I mean, I suppose we should probably talk about the structure first, because the, the, the singing, the structure is, I think it was verse, chorus, verse, chorus, with some lead sections and an instrumental intro and stuff. It's it's a great use of five and a half minutes. I think that the story was told well throughout, but we also had a lot of time with the accompaniment, which was fantastic as well. I mean, like that main motif of that four chord progression that was instantiated initially was catchy enough to keep us going for that minute. And it was just so great that we had the guitar, you know, the, the vocals come in alongside the guitar, the bass, the drums, and the occasional synth parts. To the credit of the songwriters and musicians involved, I also have to show some love to the tambourine and drum section in that last part, you know, sensational use of sort of like the antithesis of the coloration we had earlier on, which is having the drums and the tambourine and you can kind of imagine that melody that harmony because it's so ingrained in your brain from listening to it for four minutes that when you do get the guitar coming occasionally or the bass it's almost like cathartic it's like yes i knew that that was what it was that it was continuing and that's some really high level stuff that i don't get to hear often you know i think we understood where we needed to change and where we needed to continue um, it was an excellent experience hearing these musicians play together. Again, the chemistry between it was very strong. There wasn't a note out of place. Um, the, the percussion was fairly, yeah, it wasn't necessarily minimalist, but we didn't have a lot of crazy sort of drum fills or anything like that. We typically went from ace to 16s with some buzz rolls there. The guitar player had some jangly sort of like mid to high uh, fretboard parts there with the arpeggios and, and, and reverb and delay cake leads. And you know, occasionally we had some uh, overdriven guitar as well, just to provide more of a rhythmic device, a bit of percussion that was kind of a bit more stabby than everything else. The bass line rolled really well with the drums, eh, with that eighth note groove compared to the the drummer's 16th on the hi-hats and the quarter, quarter note kicks and snares. And um, yeah, the synths just twinkled past Ben. It was like, you can kind of kind of see it as like the stars in the sky. And I mean, that's that's great imagery there that's evoked by simple, simply just having someone understand how important it is to stack the frequency spectrum with different elements. But also, you know, you wanna have people invested further in your story. And if you don't have every single component of your mix, 
sorted. There, I, there, I suppose at least there's always room for improvement, right? But they, they didn't have any weaknesses with the arrangement, composition, and performance aspects. Um, the recording, the you know, the production, recording, mixing, mastering. The, 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 some of the like the high mid range, high range lead guitar parts that we had in the first verse sounded a little bit sharp, and I think they were just a little bit louder, at least per perceivably to me, than the vocals. And I'm not sure if that was a deliberate thing, if that was a stylistic thing to contrast or not. But they could have potentially been a little bit smoother. But and also maybe the smoothness of the track outside of that was meant to further need that guitar to be a little bit more spicy with its perceived loudness and the kind of the, the pluckiness of it. Um, I can't tell. I mean, like, I liked it either way. It just took me by surprise because of how well literally everything else was done. The EQing, stereo panning, filtering of various instruments in the mix, the gluing of the elements and the leveling of it. The, the effects change on the frequency spectrum, you know, like, on, not on the frequency spectrum, the effects change on like the guitars. And then the drums and bass were tight, and the sense with those little repeaters and stuff like that, and a little bit of gl gl glitter to it. Um, and the vocals as well, dude, they were just so present, even if they were so nicely tucked into the middle of the stereo field there, and especially in the verses. But yeah, just the room sound of the tambourines and drums with the, some of those lead parts on the guitar on the left, and phenomenal use of automation and panning in this track as well. I gotta hand it to them, they did a sp spectacular job. And uh, the limiting compression was absolutely fantastic. All in all, I'm incredibly pleased with this track. I have a lot to be thankful for, for hearing this band and the situation and you know that's effectively my review of this track um from sound fragments titled morning in a strange city hopefully you enjoyed it if you did please do go show this uh your sound frame with some love via the various social medias in and their spotify page stay cool and stay safe and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time is either hell more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world and i'll catch you in the next patrons video spot hands up